Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 30. In this tutorial we're going to add some sound effects to our breaking vase or vase, whatever you want to call it over there. And we're going to add in a key as well as making like a little bit of a flashy thing like you see in something like Resident Evil or something like that. Don't forget click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else about game development on my channel. Never mind, let's get to work. So, this vase, right here, or rather the broken one, has uh, a key inside of it. So we are going to have a key inside of here. So, in order to do that, we are going to need a key. So we're going to need a model. And I am going to go down the Resident Evil route a little bit here, because we're going to have a key that's shaped like a heart. So we're going to have that. Uh, that will feed on to the door that we have over here because um, I think probably next tutorial we'll have a door here that says uh, door's locked, the key looks like a heart kind of thing. So let's get ourselves a key inside here and get the sound effects working. So firstly I'm going to go to objects folder and I'm going to import this heart key folder and this is on the website if you head over there links in the description below uh, go to downloads and assets survival horror series and tutorial number 30 and you can download all of these assets all in one go so let's bring in the next thing which is the breaking sound effect which is the pottery smash and the final thing I'm going to import is that texture that you saw in the folder as well so let's go to our textures folder and bring in metal 001. This is going to be um, the texture basically for our key. So firstly, let's add the breaking sound to the pottery. So let's go on vase 001 and let's open that vase or vase break script. And there's a, a little side note here. What do you say, guys? Is it vase or vase? Let me know in the comments. I guess it just kind of depends where you come from in the world. It's like um, aluminium or aluminum. Anyway, what all we're going to do to this is add in an extra variable when it's loaded up, which is basically going to play that pottery smashing sound uh, as soon as the actual pottery smashes, just to make it seem a little bit more realistic, as it were. So Visual Studio is starting up now. It's a little bit slow, as always. Preparing solution. Yes, get on with it. We have a game to develop here. We have a game to develop. Get a move on. Perfect. So let's add in at the top public without the Y, obviously, uh, or the U, the second U. Oh my God, what's wrong with my typing today? P public audio source, and let's have this pottery break semicolon. And what we'll do is as soon as we have disabled the collider, we're going to say pottery break dot play. Oh, close bracket, semicolon, and save that script. We are going to deal more with this script, I think. Um, we might just have the key there straight away. We'll, we'll see what happens. We may decide to activate the key through the script, or we might, might just have it there to begin with. We'll see. Um, so that's compiling now, and we just need to add in the audio for that. So let's go to our FPS controller. When Unity decides it's finished compiling, <laughs> it is on a go slow today, this. Uh, let's go to effects and I'm going to duplicate hurt three. So hold control, press D and change this to pottery break. And then I'm going to just drag and drop that effect onto it right there, pottery smash. Okay. So let's attach that to the script over here and let's press play and hopefully this should work first time because it's just something nice and simple. So let's get our ammo. What? There we go. It's a nice smashing sound. Let's try that again. Okay, I've noticed this is happening and I'm not entirely sure why. I'm not sure why. I suspect we may need to change something. Uh, so we may have a bit of a debugging episode as well because obviously the the light is still on for the uh, yeah, 
muzzle flash. So we'll sort that. So what we're going to do next is deal with a key right there. So let's have the key in there. I might actually turn up the um, lighting a little bit. Let's see if it... It's not going to work there, is it? Of course not. Let's add in a test uh, light so we can see a little bit better. Uh, let's have a point light. Bring it in. I'm sure I've had one of these at one point in this level anyway. We can always disable it. Uh, range. There we go. So inside here, we are now going to have a key. And then I'm going to decide if the key should be activated after we've smashed the uh, pottery or whether it should always be there. But either way, whenever it's smashed, we're going to see the key. So let's go to our objects folder. Let's go to the key, the heart key, and let's bring it in. Uh, let's shrink it down. So point two, point two, point two. Still looks a little bit big, really. Let's try point one, point one, point one. And let's see if this will genuinely fit in the pottery without us. Uh, it seems like it won't. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that key activated after we've smashed the pottery. I guess it's a good way of uh, learning something new. Uh, let's apply the metal texture to the key as well. So let's apply it to this. So drag and drop metal onto there. And maybe let's play around with the material a little bit, make it a bit more metallic, make it smoother. And let's have albedo alpha. Uh, maybe about there. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so before we uh, set this as an object inside the vase after we've smashed it, let's have a little glowing thing to say this is an item that you can pick up. So let's go to game object, let's go to effects and particle system. And this particle system is going to be used very cleverly to actually say this is, you know, flashing to say this is an object we can pick up. Uh, I'm going to tick on pre-warm simply because um, we want it to be flashing as soon as it activates. Uh, we've dealt with particle systems before, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing all over again. Uh, but I'm just going to go through a couple of things to you know make sure that the flashing does look right. So start lifetime. Uh, let's set this as 0.1. Start speed. Let's have this as let's have it as zero to be honest. Uh, start size is going to be, in fact, start. I'm just thinking, what's the best way to do this? Because I want it to be kind of, you know, in basically just nice slow flashing rather than uh, the way it is. You see that right now, that's probably not the best way to do it. So let's have start lifetime. Let's have it as one. That's fine. And let's have a mission and rate over time one and shape. We'll have it as a sphere and radius is very, very small, literally the smallest you can get. So at this point, you should have what looks like a glowing orb. So now best thing to do is just to align that there with the key like so. Probably about there, I think, maybe. Does it look like from above? Yeah. So you should take the time to, you know, just align that just right. But you have to make sure that you are working on a sphere and the radius is small, as well as start speed zero. So what we're going to do now is we are going to change the size over lifetime. So if we go to size over lifetime right there, make sure we tick it. And already you can see how this is going to work. If we Select this here and add key. So right click, add key, and let's increase it to there. And then bring this end key right down. So you can see that flashing. Cool. Now, if we want to slow it down, we can change the start lifetime to two. That's not going to do it for us. So let's press play and let's have a look at it in the scene view. Okay, yeah, I think that should do. Um, maybe if we, we can, I don't want to mess around with it too much because I feel like I'd be wasting too much time if I do it. 
Um, because that's just you know it's it's a complete waste of time because you you guys know how to use this anyway. Uh, let's actually change the start size to point five, so make it a little bit smaller. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that particle system to the key itself. That bit is crucial because then we can move everything together quite easily. So yes, that's fine. Ah, uh, dear me. So it's complaining basically because um, obviously the way it works here is you can't be changed or deleted, moved, components reordered. Uh, so this is something that happens uh, with later versions of Unity. If you're in like Unity 17 or 2018, um, you're not going to have this problem. This is something that is uh, fairly new to Unity. And quite frankly, I do find it a bit of a pain sometimes. I hate having to deal with uh, unpacking prefabs. But if you do get that, all you need to do is click on unpack prefab. It's just an extra little thing. It's like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't feel it was necessary to actually, you know, implement that. But it doesn't really matter. So we've added that now, which is all fine. And it is a little bit crazy. Uh, let's change the scale of it. There we go. So all I've done there is just change the scale of the glow itself up here. So rather than be huge when it's inside the key, it's just a little bit smaller. So it doesn't look quite as silly. So next thing we're going to do is I'm going to place this inside a trigger. Uh, well, I say a trigger, more like um, an object that we'll be able to look at and pick up uh, ready for next tutorial. So game object, 3D object and cube. And this one we will call heart key obj. Obviously obj is short for object. So I'm going to place that up there and then bring the heart key inside. In fact, we'll just bring it straight inside there and zero out the position. So zero, zero, zero. And then that cube we're going to place just here. I think a cube might be a little bit too big. Um, what I will do is uncouple the key from it and then shrink the size a little bit. So let's have that as 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, make sure that is on the ground there. And heart key back inside and just quickly zero out the position again. And let's turn off the mesh renderer on the cube. And I'm just going to turn off the vase for now and make sure the key is indeed on the floor, which it isn't. So we can just move that. So, so th things like this now do take a little bit of time to kind of uh, get just right. Um, you need to take the time to, you know, build this up and do what you need to do. I'm kind of rushing this to, you know, get things moving along uh, quicker. That's all. Um, so let's put the vase back on. Uh, this one, I think, is it? Yeah, there we go. And key inside there. Probably need to move it along just a little bit. So let's take the key in the particle system, move it to there. Perfect. And then I'm going to turn off that key. Now let's head back to our script that we added the sound into. And then we're going to have public game object and key object semicolon and all we'll do as soon as we've broken it we will say key object dot set active true semicolon and save that script and hopefully you guys are probably ahead of me now and you're already adding that heart key object to the script so on var 001 drag and drop and let's turn off that point white. And I'm actually going to rename this to say test light and bring it just to the top of our hierarchy. There we go. So now what we should be able to do is smash this vase and the key will appear. So I'm going to save my scene and I'm going to press play. <coughs> Helps if I press a W rather than A. Oops. There we go. So there's our key. 
on the floor ready to pick up. So, that brings us on to what we're going to do next tutorial. That's pretty good, that. I'm happy with that. So we're going to have a door over here, like I said, and this key is going to be what we pick up to get through that door. So we are going to do two uh, similar things next tutorial. We're going to have the door, and we're going to have it say uh, it's locked. Looks like we need a key. And then we're also going to be able to pick up that key um, as soon as we have smashed the vase. That's why we had the cube uh, called heart key OBJ. So we'll be able to pick it up. Awesome. So, guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.